Hello all, another lot of neat layout and woodworking tools from Banker to show you today. I'll give you a quick run through of what's here first, then we'll have a more detailed look at each as we go on. To start with, there's this neat little thing, a 1945 and centre finding tool. Has a machined aluminium stock with a steel rule. Seems a really nicely made bit of kit on first look. Next up we have this rather fancy looking T-square with pencil marking holes from 0 to 380mm. It also has an adjustable part of the stock for marking angles with etched degree markings on the underside. An all aluminium construction this one. It did have a couple of issues with this which I'll cover later on. Next is this Japanese style saddle square. Wanted one of these for ages as they're great for marking all around a piece and various other uses. All aluminium again, and as well as 90s and 45s, there's etched millimetre markings and set 15 millimetre markers on the cutouts on each side, should you need it. Next is this neat looking little trammel. I like curves in my work, and although homemade trammels are easy enough to make, thought I'd give this one a try. It's nicely made, with an adjustable pivot point and a small hole for a mechanical pencil at the marking end, but again, not without its issues, which I'll cover a little later on. Finally we have this bad boy, it's a large corner template for use with router tables. It comes with a number of templates to attach, flat profiled and rounded. For the round or radius corners we have from 5 to 40mm going up in 5mm steps and for the profiled edge templates we go from what they call T10 to T40, whatever that relates to. We'll have a look at this in action at the end of the vid. A couple of the tools I bought myself and others were kindly sent to me by Banggood gratis to review for you. I'll let you know which as we go along. So kicking off with the 9045 centre finder, one I bought myself. Like pretty much all marking and measuring tools, the main thing we want to know is is it accurate. Here I've done a line at 90, flipped it over, remarking over the line to see if there's any difference. And no, it looks bang on. No splaying of the lines at all. Next I try the 45. Checking with another square, if I go in a little closer, hopefully you can see it's on the money. Obviously the centre finders only really work on square or round stock, and here I'm trying it on a square rip. In keeping with all my videos, I managed to get something completely out of shot, but I'm sure you guys know how this works. You set the piece against the stock, mark, rotate, mark again, and you should have a centre mark like this. Not entirely sure why it has it, but the stock has a magnet to hold the rule. I suppose it does help if you're a bit finger and thumbs when setting. The rule by the way has imperial one side and metric the other. Nice enough on its own, if a bit more flexy than my other steel rules. It's also narrower, which I've come across before with Banggood tools, meaning the stock won't accept your standard, say, 600 steel rule if you want it to go any longer. Regardless, like most of these type of things, you fix the rule via an Allen grub which aligns to a machine straight edge. I really like this, a new regular in the tote bag for sure. Don't know if there's a name everyone else knows these by, but I've always known them as saddle squares. This one was sent to me courtesy of Banggood. Handy millimetre measurements around the perimeter, properly zeroed at the 90 on both axes. On the 45 side though, for some reason, the measurements are set in about 4mm from the end. One side of each cutout is set at 15mm from the perpendicular face to it. Might be handy for a quick mark out of tenons when framing maybe. Other than that, no idea what they're for. So again, I'll make a few lines to check for square, which it is on both faces. Same with the 45. A small lip allows you to use this upside down for marking 45 in the opposite direction. The pencil lines are all looking dead on so far. Suppose I better check that the 15mm markings are just that. Again, as near as I can tell, dead on. Another going straight in the tote bag for work, I think. 
This trammel was another scent courtesy of Banggood to try. On first glance, a nicely made bit of kit, all alley with bronze colour pin and thumb screws. One curiosity from the off is the measurement start at 16.5mm from the hole for the mechanical pencil, and markings laid out every 10mm from there. So instead of 100mm marked clearly, for example, it's 106.5. Just bloody weird. The pin butted right up to the foot. The smallest radius possible is 36mm, the largest 300 When loosened, the centre pin will come right off. The rule slot has a machined flat bottom to keep everything straight when fixed, but the rule does need to be flat to it. This is where I found a minor issue. Centre pin close to the marking foot, rule flat to the pin, the foot will rock. You could loosen and lift the centering pin, but then it won't be seated and you can't guarantee straightness for accuracy. Left as is, with the foot able to rock, you'll get inaccurate results, broken leads and well, it's just pointless. The further out you go, the less this becomes an issue, but to eliminate it altogether is easy enough. The centering pin head itself unscrews, so here you can see me placing a small washer behind it. If we go in close, you can see that with the washer fitted, the foot is flat with the rule properly seated in the pin assembly. So, now we've done this, does it work? So setting the radius at 200mm, by counting back from the 206.5mm mark, I mean, let's see how we go. In fairness, it's bang on. I tried a 50mm radius as well, though a full SD card meant I didn't record me doing it. But again, both the 50 and 200 are dead on. It works, it's accurate, but really poorly executed from end user point of view. I can't recommend this in all honesty. So this funky looking T-square is one I bought with my own money and was quite excited to try. It's a blatant copy of Bridge City's AS24V3 square, but for about a fifth of the cost. The blade extends from the stock to what they say is 400mm but looks more like 399mm to the tip and has quite large looking 1mm holes up to 380mm. My first issue with this was the etching. Apart from where it's white at the end, it's really hard to see on this blue anodizing. Anyway, for 90 degree marking, best to have the black side down as it's fixed whereas the orange top side is rotatable, up to about 70 degrees either way I think. Set to 45, going off the markings on the underside, I can offer it up to one of the previously marked 45 degree lines. Although it looks good, I think using this for a job, I'd use a framing square or something to set the 45 more accurately, rather than relying on the markings etched in. Whilst that's a fun, possibly useful extra function, the important thing is square of course. When this arrived, it wasn't. But fear not, if you get one yourself and you find it needs adjusting, you can unscrew the nicely machined alley thumb screw and take off the orange top piece to reveal two small setting screws underneath. Worth saying here to save you mashing the small and seemingly quite soft setting screws that I found the PH2G bit size to be a good fit. Just undo the screws a little so they still bite but allow some movement, then rest against the square you know to be good. Then do the screws back up good and tight to prevent any further movement. Mine is now nice and square and thankfully I found the face of the stock and the sides of the blade to have been machined flat and true along their length. Doing a line, checking with a couple of different squares, all's good. I probably won't use them on this, but I do a line using the hole at 100mm. I used a 0.75mm pencil in the 1mm holes, but the line is surprisingly accurate. Maybe it is worth me getting a 1mm mechanical pencil. Despite the need to square it on arrival, it is a nice tool, and given its length, would definitely come in handy for layout on boards for sure. Do wish it was more clearly marked though. So finally we have the router corner template, or RT for short. A blatant copy of one of Woodpecker's one-time tools, but unlike the Woodpecker's, still available and comparatively affordable. The main body is a bit of a lump, and clearly meant for work on larger pieces, but works on exactly the same principle as the templates you might have seen in my first Banggood video. Superb little things those that have had me looking for excuses to round off corners ever since. Those had machined lips to square the workpiece against. On this new RT, you get a series of thumbscrews, eight in total, that you can screw in either side on either face. 
Worth mentioning here that this set annoyingly came in two jiffy bags, one for the body, one for all the guides. The absence of a box means not only is keeping it stored and together now an issue, but on its travels it was not sufficiently to shear off one of the thumb screws. Now it functions fine without it, you only really need four thumb screws at a time, but for the sake of a couple of dollars something like this really should have come in a box. All of these things here arrived in bags as it happened. So anyway, the various templates screw into the body via a couple of small Allen machine screws. The fit is excellent, it's really nicely machined. Not the quickest swap over, but you can have two different templates attached to the body at any one time. And there you go, all set up for a quick blast. Now although you can have two different templates attached, you need the thumb screws in different positions for each template. For a quick swap over, you could use four above and four below for quick swap over between the two templates, but of course I'm one short so I just have to move them around. The results are as you would expect, round or profiled corners. I used the T20 on the profiled or cut off corners. The angle on all of them is 45 degrees and the length of the cut off from the T20 is 35 mil. So yeah, no idea what the relevance of the 20 is. But I really like these tools and they're useful for adding interest to corners in your unit or cabinet builds with accuracy. There's a number of different types on Banggood, but this one has the most variety, I think. Just wish it came in a box. Some of the other tools you may have seen me review, like the Kerf Maker, Cabinet Hardware, Jig, and many more, came in boxes with cut foam, so they can do it. But sending so many items out in bags makes ordering a bit of a crapshoot as to what condition your tools will arrive in. This is really annoying, as a lot of these machine hand tools are otherwise really good. I use a lot of them every day for work now, I wouldn't if they were garbage. On my next contact with the marketing people, I'll bring this up with them and see what they say. So as always, links to all here will be provided below if you're interested, and I'll quickly run through the current prices here for you. This great little saddle square is listed as £11.74. The excellent 45.90 centre finder is £15.53. Worth saying actually before I forget that these prices change quite often, and offers come and go throughout the year giving you a better deal, so keep your eyes peeled. The Trammel, although after adjustment worked perfectly, I can't really recommend it, but if you want to try it for yourself, it comes in at £18.34. The Beveling T-Square I still think is a good deal, but do check it on arrival if you buy it. It costs £18.64 for the 300mm and £21.75 for the 400mm that I have here. Finally, the Router Corner Template comes in at £54.38. Might sound a lot, but the equivalent woodpecker set sold for around $300, so it's pretty good value, even without a box. So there you go. Hopefully this again will help you through the Banggood items worth a punt and those worth avoiding. Please post any thoughts or questions below, and thanks for watching.